The topic now is molar distillation using Pendex. Pendex is a very good appliance to be used in this phase of orthodontic development, of dental development, in orthodontic treatment, I mean. When we have a canine blocked, like this case here, in one side, and we have in the other side, the canine in its right position, we may suspect that we had some problem in that specific side. And we probably had here the loss, the early loss of a molar in this side, deciduous molar, of course. This case here, it happened with the loss of the second deciduous molar uh, in early, earlier than what was expected to happen, and posterior teeth drift miserly, uh, still in the space of the canine, so it's now blocked. I like the premolar, I like the pendex in this situation for distalizing molars and premolars, so we can regain the space for the canine to go to its position. Of course, we can do the extraction of one premolar this side, but I really don't like asymmetric extraction in, in maxilla. Yes, I have my, my uh, explanations for that, but it's not the case here. In this situation, when I do the distalization of the upper molar and then the premolars, we can uh, recover the right space for the eruption or the, the traction of the canine. And this is something that it, it, it won't take long with appliance like this. I love using TEDs, I love other options, yes I do, but I really rely on the Pendex to do this type of distalization. It is a very rigid appliance, it's a very strong appliance and can be used in this phase here, permanent dentition. Early permanent dentition is the phase that I usually use the Pendex. Of course, I can use them, I can use the Pendex also during the mixed dentition. I use them, I use Pendex a lot. I use the distalizers a lot. That's what I'm saying them. I distalize in this phase so we can provide enough space for permanent teeth to erupt in their right position. This case here, it's not the same. We are regaining the space. We're distalizing so we can again have the right space for the canine. What goes on in such case? What's, let's say, what's, what happens so we have this canine blocked? Well, it's usually related to the early loss of deciduous molar. And it will depend on if it is the second molar, deciduous molar, or the first deciduous molar. And it will also depend on the phase that the molar was lost. So it's a very early loss or it's like a close to the right moment loss. Is it the first or second deciduous molar? It will depend, of course, sometimes we can have the second premolar being blocked in such situation because of very early loss and the second molar was the tooth that was lost. So the first permanent molar, it misializes very fast and will steal space of the second premolar, blocking it usually uh, palatally, towards palatal. It goes uh, palatally and it's blocked. We sometimes see this very and in some situations in our offices, we see the second premolar palatally displaced and we know that it happened in many cases, it, we know that we happened, it happened because of the very early loss of the second deciduous molar. What, what, well, what happened in this case here is the, that the second and the first premolar, premolar they were allowed to erupt in their position, a little bit misialized, and the canine was blocked in such case because the space for it is not there anymore because of drifting of posterior teeth towards mesial. And this is very common, especially when we have um, in some places here in Brazil or probably in your, in your, in your country is going to be the same. We have some patients that they don't have access to the prevention, to floor, uh, to fluoride, uh, and they lost, they, they lose their teeth very early. And we have such situation. And we have this mesial drifting of posterior teeth. And because of that, again, sometimes 
The tooth that is blocked is not the canine, but the premolar. In some cases, we don't have need, the need for doing the visual distalization of the molar because everything is all right. Mesial to the molar, the molar now is in a set, in class two condition, solid class two, full step class two, and the second premolar is blocked palatally. Sometimes you just need to remove the second premolar. Don't even need to do this type of treatment. But in other cases like this, the canine is blocked. I'm not saying, guys, that when the second premolar is blocked, you never need to do the distalization of the molar. I'm just saying that in this case, you have another option. You can do the extraction of the second premolar and sometimes don't even need to do a, a treatment, orthodontic treatment for that an orthodontic treatment for that. So we just keep the occlusion like it is and just do the extraction of the second premolar. Of course, it depends on several variables, but it is possible. In this case, we need to, to, uh, to, to opt. Are we going to distalize? Are we going to extract the second premolar, the first premolar and do the extraction of the canine? I really don't like to do asymmetric extractions in maxilla. This is me, but you can do that. Some, in some cases, you can do that. I just don't want to do that in my patients because I don't like the type of smile that I give when I do the asymmetric extractions. It will depend, again, on several variables, but I usually don't do that. So what happened here? Premolars, they were allowed to, to erupt not in the right position, a little bit misialized, and the canine was the tooth that was blocked. There is no room for the eruption of the canine because posterior teeth misialized because of the early loss of the second molar, and now we have the canine impacted. What can we do in such case? We can do the extraction of premolar, as I told you, but when I focus on the diagnosis and I see that the problem was generated because of the mesialization of posterior teeth, I can have the option of distalizing them again and providing space for the canine eruption or traction if necessary. It usually, do, uh, if, if we do, sometimes you don't need to do the traction. It goes to its position just when we have enough space, when we provide enough space for them. And here we go uh, to the what we need to do now. I really like to do this, to distalize the molar and in such case, because of the asymmetric position of the, can the molar and the displaced canine and the possibility of drifting the, 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 the midline, I like to do this. I prefer to do the distalization and during the distalization, I correct the upper midline with fixed appliance, of course, I like the fixed appliance to do that. And the Pendex is what we use in most of the cases that has this condition, that have the con this condition. The cases that have this condition can be distalized with the, the Pendex. And let me show to you how I do, how is the protocol that I use the pen with the Pendex. I need to do the activation of the the, the loop, activation of the distalizing loop, the TMA distalizing loop here, before, before doing the installation of pen, before installing Pendex. Why is that? Because in mouth, it is very, very difficult to do this type of activation. Believe me, don't, don't do that. You won't, you, it may, and sometimes you may even hurt badly your patient's palate. So don't do that. Try to avoid doing this in your patient in mouth and do that before installation of the Pendex. So we do that and here it is how we do. We do the activation of the loop. This is a TMA 032 um, inches and we do that like this. We put it parallel to the maxillary suture and then we do the, the, the installation, we insert the loop inside the bone, the, the, inside the tube. And there are other, I, I can say detail, there are some things that can help you. 
like the pre-activation in first and second order of the tip of the tip that is going to be inserted in the tube of the tip of the loop. So look at this. I'm going this way, and when I do this, I lose approximately 30% of activation uh, because of the wire, the permanent deformation of the, the, the wire, and I do a pre-activation in first order. Look at this. I know that when I'm doing a distalization, like putting the force, the line of force, the line of action of the force in the pallet, we have a rotation of this molar when it's distalizing the molar. We have the rotation that in this view here, we, we call it counterclockwise rotation. So I'm doing an activation to counteract the tendency of rotation of this molar. So this is the first order activation of the tip of the pendex. Look at this. And the second order activation, when we look this way, look at this. The second order activation is for controlling the angulation of the tooth, this, this molar, when it, is, when it is distalized. We know that applying the line of action of the force this, at this height, we tend to do the rotation, angulation of the molar with the crown going distal and the root going mesial. As you can see here, I'm doing the opposite. I'm doing an angle, I'm giving an angulation to the tip of the loop that will force the root mesial and the crown, the root distal and the, the crown mesial. So quite the opposite of with what we are having when we do the distalization. So because of the movement of distalization tends to uh, angulate the molar with the root going distal and with the crown going distal and the root going mesial, I'm doing the opposite. So this is the pre-activation in second order. And uh, it will allow me to control better the angulation of the molar during distalization, which is a problem. We know that when the second molar is not erupted yet, the angulation of the molar is higher, is bigger than when we compare when the second molar is in mouth. But when the second molar is in mouth, there's another problem. The treatment is, um, is delayed because it's slower movement. It gives a slower movement when the second premolar is in mouth. Uh, people usually ask, what are the side effects of the distalizer like the Pendex? Intraoral distalizer without tear. We know that the anterior teeth will incline, procline, the angulation of premolar will take place. The angulation of the molar is another problem. So we can avoid at least the angulation of the molar. The other, the other side effects are very difficult. With this, this type of anchorage, if we apply, TEDS is different, okay? But with this type of anchorage, a tooth-borne appliance will have this problem. No, there's no way to control it. But there's a good thing here. After distalization, if we just like, um, we free the premolars, we keep them free, and we just use the bottom, the nest bottom, the premolars will distalize again, and there's a recovery of the inclination of anterior teeth naturally because of this distalization of the premolars that will take place because of the fibers. The tra transeptal fibers will allow it to happen, okay? So let's move on. This is the activation in second order. So first of all, we do the expansion with the appendix and after expansion, and we have the protocol of expansion, but right after achieving the expansion that you planned for, you just release the molar. So we do the, we cut the wire in this position here, and now we release the molar to do the distalization. Now it is free to distalize and it goes smoothly and beautifully and very fast. <laughs> and then we just remove the premolar, remove the pendex. Eventually we'll remove the pendex and we'll put, I use the nymph's bottom for this. And then we wait, especially if we are in this phase here or in the, the late stage of mixed dentition, we will wait. So we have uh, 
permanent dentition and then we will uh, use uh, fixed appliance to do the finishing and this is a very good appliance and that's it guys we do the distillation and we do the correction of the, the, the position of the molar in one side and the class 2 in this side using this protocol hope you enjoyed this and uh, if you have further questions please let me know i'm here for you and this is just a morphine uh, video of the the whole process the entire process that's it see you soon guys bye bye